Now, will he or will he not let me film a video? That is the question. Come on then. Let's film a video. Wait, I know why you can't see. I forgot that I flip it up. <sighs> Mummy's lost all knack for this. Say hi, everyone. Say hi, everyone. Hello, people. <gasps> Whoa. Are you going to show everyone your big smiles? Nah, I'm asking too much there, Anna. Hi, everyone. So this is going to be a little bit of a different video. It's not got Amy in. She's celebrating her birthday weekend in Edinburgh. But something just came over me and I was just like, Hannah, pick up the camera. Pick up the camera. See how it goes. Edit it. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But I need to do a little, little update video on this little chap as I haven't made a video introducing him to our channel yet and it's something that I always said I would do when I was pregnant and I've just not got around to it I mean he's not even three months old yet so you can you'll all probably understand that I've literally been like so 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 busy Um, if we keep looking outside it's because I'm trying to get light and there's all stuff going on outside I just feel like I've lost all sense of like confidence in doing this the idea of doing one on my own I was just like oh no 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 like I can't do that. I'm on maternity leave and it, it can get quite... I've, I'm surrounded by so many friends, so many family, but it can get quite lonely when you're on your own. So I was just like, pick the camera up, see what you think, film a video. If you use it, you use it. If you don't, you don't. So yeah, so this is kind of just a catch up really. Um, This is my little boy. He is 10 weeks old today when I'm filming this. Are <laughs> you looking at the camera? Yeah, he is 10 weeks old, he's getting a little bit chunky now and he's losing that like newborn look which at first I was dreading so I was like no he needs to stay newborn forever but no I'm so excited like he's already like really chunky and getting a little personality and lots of smiles and babbles so you know, I'm just loving it. He's amazing. So he is called Kason. His surname is Walker, that's my um, boyfriend's surname. I'll tell you the story about how we came up with Kason because I know so many people ask. Um, all throughout my pregnancy when midwives have asked if I have a name, I've told them and they were like, oh, that's really unusual, I've like, never heard of that one. Basically, I really, really liked the name Mason and my boyfriend really liked Casey for a boy. And then we was just like searching, we downloaded an app, it's a little bit like Tinder. <laughs> I swipe, if I like one, swipe the other way if I don't. He does the same and if we both match on a name, it notifies that it was hilarious. Um, but the name Kason came up and we was both like, that's like our two blended together. So that's how we came up with that one. Um, middle name is Elias, as in E-L-I-A-S. Um, a lot of you will probably guess why we did that but the whole reason behind doing that is because it is Walt Disney's middle name and I just I liked the name anyway re regardless whether it was connected to Disney in any way but the fact that I just loved the way Case and Elias Walker sounded and the fact that it is a little touch of Disney I just I love that I'm so happy and he went to Disney when he was a bump and we have his first trip planned so yeah, we've got so I've got so much to catch you up on, but I just don't know where to begin. It's just very bouncy, and I don't know how long I'm going to be able to hold him. Let's take you up to the camera and have a little look. Are you going to say hello to everyone? <gasps> say hi, everyone. Say hi, everyone. <gasps> oh, I'll punch mum in the face. That'll do fine. I'm not so sure how many smiles you're going to get. In fact, you're probably going to get none. If you follow me on Instagram, you see all his smiles and everything. Yeah, I don't really know what to catch you up on. I suppose I could talk about birth story. Um, I'll go into detail. Like, yeah, I'll let, let's discuss birth story because I know some people will ask. I have posted like a brief overview on my Instagram of how things went and stuff. But I'll try and... It's a long story, so I'll try and keep it short. And I'll try and remember dates, but I forget. I lost about three to four days sleep straight through, not even kidding. I was due on Friday the 16th of March and the Wednesday before that, I went for what they call a sweep, um, which is basically your midwife trying to open up your cervix a little bit to um, get things rolling and if you were gonna have the baby sooner rather than later, that would work. Some people's don't, you can go for a second one and then even that might not work. But I had my first one on the Wednesday, just the 14th. 
yeah and friday the 16th is when i was due he was very low down head in place quite early on and i suffered really bad with pains they weren't contractions that was just because his head was so low so i i had in my mind like this is this will work this week will work um just let me put him down because i think he's tired right i'm back i've just put him in his nose's basket over there because he's due asleep so i was convinced that this would work um went to the doctor's my appointment she completed the sweep told me that afterwards by the way if i talk about tmi like skip past if you don't want to know like blood and birth and all things like that she did the sweep and then told me that you might spot a little bit afterwards so like have a little bit of bleeding that's not what they would call like the bleeding you can get before you're in labor like when you're contracting um she said that'll just be from what she's done but obviously keep an eye on it and things like that um and yeah and they, i think they say take like if it was going to work i think it's like two to three days i'm not sure that that's probably wrong but anyway nothing came of i had a bit of belly ache but again that was just like pains like where i know she'd been sort of thing um so yeah wednesday night was fine thursday which is obviously the day before I was due, absolutely nothing. I did the whole drink raspberry leaf tea, buy a pineapple, eat curries, bounce on your birthing ball. Um, I did all the, the myths. They don't work. It, well, you never know. It, that might be what started me off, but you just do it because that's what people say. Oh, we'll do this like that. I'll trigger it off, but I don't know if it actually does. Yeah, so nothing came of Wednesday night. Nothing came of Thursday. He makes a lot of like whingy noises when he's trying to fall asleep. He's quite hot and bothered. It's really warm in the UK at the minute. I'm actually sweating. So yeah, nothing came of Wednesday night. Nothing came of Thursday. And then Friday, my due date, nothing. And then Saturday, I started having a little bit. We was watching Ant and Dex Saturday Night Takeaway, I remember it. And then um, I was laying on the settee and I was getting like like crampy tummy ache, a bit like bit like period pains but not as severe and i was just a bit like oh i've never had that before and it it came a bit and then it went and then like throughout ant and dex saturday night takeaway i kept getting like quite a few and i downloaded the time wrap and just out of curiosity i was like oh let's like time and let's see if there's a pattern and um there actually did end up being a pattern so me and my boyfriend were a bit like oh like i wonder if this is it and it never got close it was literally like 10 12 minutes apart and then i remember we we was fine i just went to bed that was saturday night though and my boyfriend was due in work on the sunday morning but he rang the night before and just said like she's having pain don't want obviously he would he would be the manager on the sunday shift and he wouldn't just want to leave so he just pre-warned and then someone covered it for him anyway so he got the sunday off just in case and then i remember on the sunday i was a bit annoyed really because i was still getting the odd cramp in my lower back on the sunday but it was never consistent i had hours and hours of no pains at all and i was like oh like maybe it wasn't anything went to bed on the sunday and then monday i started getting pains throughout the morning and the afternoon then and we'd time them and they'd stay pretty regular and then go off pattern a bit so i was like right it's nothing so like we'll just figure it out and then i remember around like three four o'clock they were pretty pretty brutal it, it was getting to the point where like i'd have to stop doing what i was doing um i managed to calm myself down with each contraction this was my fear i i've never spoke about it but i suffer really bad with anxiety and my anxiety is over health like i'm obsessed with my health and it's not a nice thing. I know so many different forms of anxiety. Like, I, I despise mine. Like, I hate how it makes me sometimes. But we won't delve into that because I've never spoke about it. And it's boring to people. <laughs> um, but I'd read up on hypnobirthing. I'd watched videos. I'd learn all these techniques to help myself get through it. So I didn't just go into this mass panic and could calm myself down. And I did. I learned... I did all my breathing techniques with my boyfriend when i was getting contractions at home when they was getting really severe around tea time on the monday each time i got one i stayed on my ball each time i got one i had to get my boyfriend to sit behind this is gonna sound weird to sit behind me and like almost pull my legs apart like one on one side one on the other um 
while I breathed. It just helps. I don't know why. I might just have to settle in like this. Because he's not settling over there. Yeah, so me and my partner both then decided at five o'clock and I remember I was watching the chase and he was like, let's put some food in because they tell you to eat before you're in real active labour because obviously once you're in hospital you can't eat. Yeah, so we had some food and then, oh, he's really pulling my hair. Wow. We had some food and throughout this I was getting like contractions every like seven minutes which is still way too far apart for you to ring and that lasted all through the rest of the night then. It got to about 11 o'clock and I was like this is very like very painful now when they're like five minutes apart and um, so I rang the labour ward and she asked if I'd had my bloody show which is something women get right before the, the like to show that they're in labour and I hadn't and she was like right um what I advise is you just take two paracetamol now because at this point I'd had no pain relief and um, take two paracetamol run yourself a warm bath not hot because you're not allowed hot bath um when you're pregnant and she's like run yourself a warm bath get in and see if it calms the contractions down because some women think they're in labour and a bath will either slow or stop it down if it wasn't going to continue into like active labour to go into hospital so I was like right okay so I ran myself a warm bath with some candles I got in and at this point I was having contractions every five minutes I was in that bath for over an hour and I only had about two contractions the whole time I was in there so I was a little bit like gutted really because I was like oh that's it like it's it stopped it like I'm I wasn't happy but at the same time I was absolutely shattered. I didn't get any sleep the night before so I was like right well at least I can get some sleep. Got out of the bath, dried, got changed, went to lie in bed then. Was still getting the pains so my boyfriend put um, like some soothing like you know like waves and things like that which actually really helped me breathe through my contractions and they were manageable and then it, it literally was like an hour after my bath in bed they came and they came fast and like the pain you can't remember pain that's why people say when they give birth never again and then you end up thinking actually i want another one like you can't remember pain but at the same time you kind of can you can explain it because you try and describe it when it's happening to you and i just kept describing it as like period pains that came from my the front of my stomach right round to my back but then as they got worse and worse and stronger and closer together especially when i was in hospital it was almost as if the, i literally felt like there was a knife in the middle of my stomach and i've never heard anyone explain a contraction like that but that is what mine were like oh it was it wasn't nice um but it got to the point where i couldn't stay in bed i was wriggling i was bending over i was really upset like crying not i wasn't a hysterical birther i wasn't one of these like nah, like i was calm because that's what i promised myself to be like um but at the same time it was really hurt me and i was upset now and then i needed the toilet and this was around midnight i just gone midnight went to the toilet and there was a bit of blood so i knew then i was like oh this must be it um and then it, it got a bit uncontrollable then i couldn't stay in bed so my boyfriend got ready, I rang the hospital and they just said like, do you think you need to come in to be examined? And I was like, yeah, please, please. And they was like, that's fine, you come then. So I rang my mum then. My mum and Christian, my boyfriend, is my, they, they were my birthing partners. I keep saying my boyfriend, why don't I just say his name? So my dad drove us down and I was still getting these contractions. And I just remember thinking, and my mum and Christian said the same, like they just hoped that I didn't get there and get turned away. So yeah, I got straight up to a delivery ward. Well, the delivery ward. I asked in my birth plan for a water birth and that room was free, so that was absolutely fine. The room's nice, it's, I say it's nice. It's dimly lit, I had like purple lights, twinkly lights everywhere. The pool, she warmed that up for me when I got in. I got changed into like my sports bra and then I went into the pool. She hooked me up to gas in her, which I generally did not feel the benefit of that. I watched One Born Every Minute and things like that and women are completely out of it. There was twice, well, there was two moments throughout it that I did feel a little bit like drunk, but my gas and her was making this horrific sound. Sometimes it would be the like <sighs> noise, but then I just got this like almighty rattle every now and again and the worse and worse my contractions were getting, the more and more angry I was. And I remember launching it at one point. Like I said, I wasn't a bad birther. I wasn't a, like... I wasn't out of control but I literally was like I'd rather just not have the gas in her like that noise is just it's just getting to me so I was in the pool for over an hour I think 
just contracting as normal doing my breathing techniques keeping as calm as i could but then it got to the point where with each contraction I, my mum said i was sort of like growling with it like a, a really deep growl like i was trying to push so she called the midwife in and at this point my waters hadn't broke but as she was called in i like felt the urge to like growl again and like push i wasn't pushing in a sense of like when you know well, what i would assume giving birth is like but it just it was just uncontrollable i just couldn't help it and um i said to her, like i think my waters might have gone but i was in, i was in a pool so i wouldn't know she put me on the bed to examine me i was up on my knees and she was like your cervix is literally nearly gone but i can feel your waters bulging they're still there just as she said this um and this is etched in christian's mind like anything just as she said this um i got a contraction and like growled with it again and my waters just burst everywhere. I even heard it like a balloon just burst everywhere. And I was on my knees facing away from the midwife. The midwife was obviously behind me. And I could just see like the liquid coming to my knees. And I knew straight away what had happened because it wasn't clear. It was like a greeny brown colour. Christian said uh, the midwife literally had to duck out the way from my waters just exploding, which is hilarious but um yeah i knew what had happened because i saw the water and I, I i before i did my teaching degree at uni i wanted to be a midwife but i never ended up doing it so i knew all these different things i love childbirth i love reading about it so i knew it would be that he had opened his bowels inside which is basically he's pooed inside me um so it's in the waters and then it's, it's called it's called meconium baby's poo so then she was like, Hannah, we're going to have to move you to another room onto a bed. So I was a bit upset because obviously if that happens, like if there's meconium in your waters, you can't have a water birth. And that was that really was my wish. But I can't complain because everything was going well so far. Um, and obviously if that happens, the baby has to be monitored because the heart rate can dip and things like that. Um, and if that does happen, then it would have been emergency, like C-section and things like that. But um, they strapped me up to the monitors and as soon as they moved me onto a, b a bed his heart rate went completely normal because they called people in at first because they thought it was dipping but it didn't it, it ended up being fine and literally as i got into this room and onto the bed um i was pushing and this is a bit tmi but um as he was crowning again i don't remember what that felt like but my mum was like we knew when that was because you was just looking around and like like screaming the only time i did make a noise through my pushes i didn't i held my breath because i knew that helped you pushing but i did make a, a bit of noise when he was crowning but um i got asked if i wanted to feel by the midwives i was like no no like i just and they was like go on hannah you'll regret it go on like let just just have a feel and i was like oh so I put my hand down and I could feel his head and next minute it just went back up and I can't explain what that felt like and I was just horrified and I looked at the midwives and they was laughing at me and I was just like what has just happened like that was just an awful feeling but yeah um so it took a while for me to get past that point of his head but yep he was out I thought I'd get emotional with this but you know what I've cried so much over this birth story and pictures and things like that that I just feel too, I just feel too, like, so proud, so, so proud. Um, total time on my hospital thing is, like, 3 hours and 49 minutes from getting into hospital, which is exactly what I wanted. Um, literally the moment they put him in my arms, I just cannot explain that feeling, and I don't think anyone can. Nobody say, everybody says that, like, it's just amazing. He's absolutely perfect, like, literally everything I wanted. It was bittersweet, as when they examined me after I delivered the placenta, um, I had, um, torn which is basically a term and they did there's different types um like a fourth degree is the worst or something and there's the th a third and a third 3a and all different terms like that i had a 3a which meant i had to go into surgery for mine and get numbed from the waist down while they stitched me up and things like that um so it was bittersweet as i didn't get to give him his first feed or his first change i had to pretty much go but i was happy his dad doing that i was fine like it gave me time in this these honestly theatre was actually like such a highlight i've never felt so relaxed i was completely numb they had the radio on in the theatre like trying to calm everything they were so nice and i was literally laid there i was in there for about 45 minutes and i just remember lying there and just thinking like 
what has just happened to me like the most amazing thing has just happened and it gave me time to think about it and i was happy knowing that his dad got that little bit of bonding time as well so yeah and then i was back round to the ward had family visit on the night and then was home the next day by got discharged at five o'clock in the evening you have to wait for all your medication and things like that and i got sent home with a fair few antibiotics and things like that um because of surgery but yeah it was just the proudest moment of my life and it is the best thing i've ever done like i am head over heels with him as is christian and the whole family like amy is such an amazing auntie with him and it's just brought the fam we're a close family you all know that from vlogs but it's just brought us even closer and um yeah that is the story of the birth so yeah a quick catch up before i round it up um me and amy are going to try and get back to um videos We've booked his first Walt Disney World trip for next year, so we want to film. We want to film everything running up to that, like how we plan it, what we do each day, and things like that. A part of me really, really, really wants to have the guts to do weekly vlogs. I'm still um and ah about what to do. Obviously, I'm on maternity leave, and I'm surrounded by friends and family, but it can get lonely and boring. And I just love the idea of weekly vlogs. I love watching people's weekly vlogs, and it's just too much of what if and what if people don't like it, and just all different things like that really playing around in my mind. But I would like them to look back on as well, especially having him now. And obviously being a new mum as well, that's good for people to see. And yeah, just, I don't know. I, I'm i am desperate to do it. I need to just have the guts to do it, really. If it's something I enjoy doing, why not? But again, I'm not so sure yet. But yeah, that's everything. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was nice to see him and have a little bit of a catch up and i will see you next time with whatever video we have planned if you want to follow me on instagram all the information's underneath that's where i post a lot about him a lot i know most of the our youtube followers have me and amy on instagram anyway we have a joint one and then a separate one i post most of the things about him on my separate one so yeah we shall see you next time bye <laughs> 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 Oh, there's a wriggle on it. Make sure he does that again. <laughs>